the other thing I'd add to that is with the idea of submitting a, a really popular option online and a great way of engaging people is to have people be able to vote on which option they want to win. So everyone can post an idea, but all the users get to vote. So voting is a really kind of big thing. But great. Well, well done, everyone. You're clearly thinking social media, and uh, that's kind of the point. So we'll move on now to social media as social change. And our first example is the revolution in Iran over the summer of 2009. So we really saw, it was dubbed the Twitter revolution. We saw people on the ground when the Iranian government was attempting to block all media, and even CNN couldn't get any stories out of there. You had citizens on Twitter posting videos, on YouTube posting photos, on Flickr, and exposing what they believe to be election fraud. And the U.S. State Department stepped in and asked Twitter to postpone their scheduled maintenance in order to keep Twitter up and running during the week of the revolution. So it's a pretty dramatic example. Um, right now, currently in Sudan, um, protesters, rebel groups are using Twitter and social media to uh, protest their leader, um, who they believe was involved in the genocide in Darfur, Omar al-Bashir. And there's a video we'll watch of a dissident being arrested. Um, someone got a video of it, put it up on YouTube. It's had 15,000 views in the last month. It's not on the level of the Iranian revolution, but it's a situation where many people looking at it, analyzing the news, are saying this guy never would have, you know, he would have just disappeared. You literally would have disappeared off the face of the earth, and now people are paying attention. So it's really meaningful. They're also using their cell phones, mobile apps, tweeting, and using Facebook. And apparently the president of Sudan has gone on the record as saying that this is a thorn in his side. So you know, sometimes that's how change happens. So we're going to watch a short video of um, this guy getting arrested in Sudan. So you can see. And then وللزمن لكم بحامي بتنتفوا يا كلكم في العاصفة دون عاطفوا يا كلكم في العاصفة دون عاطفة قربنا تلتغيبوا في مخاطبة جماهيرية حملة قرفنا حملة قرفنا عملوا مخاطبة جماهيرية مخاطبة جماهيرية مجنة حملة حملة شنة شباب عملنا يحمل تعالي يا دون شباب معك وينو so there you go. Just that little video, just someone capturing it on who knows, their flip video, their their cell phone, and that guy could be disappeared is what they call it, and yet here is a record and it's raising awareness. So that's pretty exciting. My view. And then we're going to watch one more video, our last video. Who knows the naked chef, Jamie Oliver? Was oh, okay. Okay. I was watching him last night. Yeah. yeah. So he's launching his own revolution. It's called a food revolution. Yeah, I watched that last night. And uh, here's the video that he put up on YouTube. We, we go into the town with fresh eyes. Uh, this town uh, is within a fairly small area of America, which has been pinpointed as uh, historically one of the most um, unhealthy parts of America um, and you know that's basically because of death, diabetes, heart disease, stuff like that um, and really we just get to know the community, we get to the schools, um, you know we, we, we go into people's homes and you try and work out why has it got like this and then really through, through simple bits, I mean, basically through cooking, um, we try and get people we try and give them the tools to make different choices, really, save money, and, and live longer lives, really. Mm -hmm. So you've got an online petition now. Can you tell me a little bit about how that's working out? Yeah, I mean, basically, um, we're on program four tonight. We've got another two shows to go out. Um, and really what we want to do in the next sort of month is take the petition to the White House um, and present sort of our findings and sort of cement our, our story, really, our campaign to get children fed better at schools, um, get the junk out of schools, get some real food in there, 
Um, so we've got about 200, I think nearly 230,000 uh, signatures already, which is amazing. Um, and so, when we'll go back to the slide. So, it just, as someone, so I'm 37, I'm in my late 30s. I, to see someone who's like got this stature and is really respected and has books published and has been on major media outlets, and he's just sitting there like in his sweatshirt. He looks like he didn't even brush his hair. Right? <laughs> and he's like talking to the camera. This is social media. It's people want it this way. They want it raw. They want it real. They don't want you groomed. They don't want you stylized. They want Jamie Oliver speaking directly to you. And we'll go to the next slide. So um, he has said, update your Facebook status with Fresh food, fresh food, not french fries. That's kind of his slogan, fresh food, not french fries. Put it on your Facebook status and link, put this URL that links to signing the petition. He's saying tweet the message, fresh food, not french fries, and link to the petition. And he got 30,000 signatures in eight hours. I mean, it's just awesome. So he's going to take that petition to the White House and he's going to try to get better food into our schools and better nutrition into our schools. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, another reason why I think this is interesting is he is a great example of combining traditional media and social media. So he's not just doing social media, he's also going on Larry King Live, he's also going on Oprah, he's got them promoting his efforts. So he's using both, and uh, that's really the way in this day and age of making things happen is you've got to pay attention to both. So it's not like you're ignoring traditional media. Um, all right, so. Just to wrap up, we have some do's and don'ts as a uh, social media maven that you all are, destined to be, I'm sure. Um, please do not speak like a marketing professional or a business school grad. If you start to bust out the lingo, people are going to be totally turned off. You're going to talk like a real person. Don't sell stuff much. Okay, you can occasionally <laughs> sell stuff, but if you're just online tweeting about sales and promotions, totally take people out there and not into that. So pick your moments wisely. Don't try to control the conversation. You don't own the conversation, and if you try to manage it, you're going to piss people off. You allow the community to police itself. A great example of this is Wikipedia, right? It's gotten now rated as more reliable than the Encyclopedia Britannica. Why is that? Well, people police it themselves. The community polices it. If you put up an entry and someone else says that's not correct and they go on and fix it, they've made their own rules about how many times you can post stuff that's not accurate until you get booted out of the community. And they've totally developed that on their own. Another good example is Craigslist of you know, just posting things and you know, being honorable and the community sort of policing itself. eBay, you get a rating system. So. Next, measure, do not measure the strength of your community in numbers alone. So it's very easy to become obsessed with the numbers game, how many Twitter followers, how many Facebook fans. Well, you know, that is important to a certain extent, but you want a core of fanatical users who serve as voluntary evangelists for your brand. Apple does a brilliant job of this. People who like Apple will endlessly promote the brand. They will tweet about their iPhone and their iPad and the latest app that they downloaded, and they will go out and evangelize. And Apple can, you know, put up a few billboards and sit back and twiddle their thumbs, and everyone's doing their work for them. So you want that core. You want that core group that's just crazy about your brand. And then you want the other people to be engaged. If you have a bunch of followers but none of them are engaged and they don't really care, then you're really not making a dent in social media terms. And don't take things too seriously. So, you know, people get upset and they, you know, made that Domino's thing and they thought, oh my goodness, this is the end of the world. But, you know, the community will forgive and forget. Um, things are very short-lived in this day and age, so it's going to be a flash in the pan and three months later, most likely, people aren't going to remember. So if things go haywire, don't sweat it, deal as best you can, and move on. <laughs>